Our Daily Chews, your go-to podcast for all things nutrition. I'm Lynn Clayton, a registered dietitian nutritionist and your host. I help you sort fact from fiction with a research-based and common sense approach to nutrition science. Today, we're diving deep into a topic that's near and dear to many hearts, literally. We're talking about cardiovascular health and the role cholesterol plays. So grab your notepads because this episode is packed with information you can use. Cholesterol often gets a bad rap, but it's important to understand that not all cholesterol is created equal. Cholesterol is a waxy, fat-like substance that's essential for building cells and producing certain hormones. Our bodies need it, but like most things, it's all about balance. Let's start by understanding what cholesterol actually is. Picture cholesterol as little boats in your bloodstream. These boats carry fats, also known as lipids, throughout your body. We measure these boats, or lipoproteins, in the blood to get a sense of our cholesterol levels. We don't measure cholesterol directly, we measure lipoproteins. We've got three main types to consider. While there's more complexity to this than often presented, here is a simple way to think of the different types. One is we have LDL, or low-density lipoprotein. This is often dubbed the bad cholesterol. Think of LDL as cargo ships that can sometimes get stuck and form clogs in our arteries. Then we have HDL, known as high-density lipoprotein. This is referred to as the good cholesterol. These are the cleanup crew swooping in to take excess cholesterol back to the liver for disposal. And then we have the VLDL, or very low-density lipoprotein. These are like the small delivery trucks carrying triglycerides, another type of fat, around the body. High levels of VLDL can contribute to plaque buildup in the arteries. Your body needs cholesterol. It's an essential component of your cells, and it helps to make hormones along with many other vital functions. So more cholesterol is good, right? Well, too much cholesterol can be a problem. Excess cholesterol in the wrong area, like blood vessels, can potentially lead to blockages, which can lead to things like heart attacks and strokes. As with most things, our body needs cholesterol, but in the right amounts and in the right places. And to ensure we get enough, our liver can actually make cholesterol. It's essential to understand that cholesterol levels alone do not paint the full picture of heart disease risk. Other factors such as inflammation, blood pressure, and the health of blood vessels are critical components. So if cholesterol is so essential, when does it become a bad thing? There are several factors or lifestyle habits that can contribute to high cholesterol levels. And let's talk about a few. First is diet. Consuming way too many saturated fats and trans fats will raise LDL. Drinking too much alcohol and having a high sugar diet, especially sugary beverages, can lead to higher triglycerides and may raise cholesterol as well. Lack of exercise. Physical inactivity can lower your HDL, your good cholesterol, and exercise can help raise the HDL and lower the LDL. Obesity. Excess weight can increase LDL cholesterol and lower the HDL cholesterol, a bad combination. Smoking also lowers HDL cholesterol and it damages blood vessels. Insulin resistance or diabetes. Being insulin resistant with or without a diagnosis of diabetes can cause higher triglycerides and it can affect both the LDL and HDL. Hypothyroidism can also lead to a high triglyceride or cholesterol level. Chronic kidney disease can cause a rise in cholesterol and triglycerides. Inflammatory diseases, conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, among other inflammatory conditions, can affect cholesterol as well. Pregnancy, cholesterol can increase, especially in the third trimester. Genetics, family history can play a significant role in your cholesterol levels. And of course, age and gender. Cholesterol levels naturally rise as we age, and women's cholesterol levels tend to be lower than men's until menopause. After menopause, women's risk of heart disease is just as high as men's. 
and some medications can also increase triglycerides and affect cholesterol levels. So there are multiple reasons that cholesterol levels may go up. But here's a plot twist. Cholesterol alone isn't the ultimate villain in heart disease. While it's a significant marker, heart disease risk is more complex. It's like saying the only thing that matters in baking a cake is the flour. Many ingredients contribute to the final product. While your standard lipid panel gives valuable insights, certain specialized tests can provide a more comprehensive assessment. Specialty labs have identified other markers that give a more complete picture of cardiovascular health. One is LP little a, or lipoprotein little a. This is a genetic variant of LDL. High levels of LP little a can increase the risk of atherosclerosis. ApoB, or apolipoprotein B, is the protein component of LDL, VLDL, and IDL, which is intermediate density lipoprotein. High levels indicate a higher number of atherogenic particles. And CRP, or C-reactive protein, is an inflammation marker that can indicate underlying vascular inflammation. Homocysteine is a type of amino acid that can indicate a vitamin deficiency or a genetic condition that can lead to damage of arteries and increase the risk of heart attack and stroke. And then, of course, the advanced lipid panel will break down the LDL particles into small and large, with smaller, denser particles being more harmful. Getting these tests can be as simple as asking your healthcare provider, but you might need to advocate for yourself since they aren't part of the standard testing protocol. To get these tests, you might need to see a specialist. Your insurance may or may not cover them. And many direct-to-consumer labs from companies like LabCorp and Quest will provide access to these labs if you're willing to pay out of pocket. If you have concerns about your risk of heart disease or stroke, it may be worth knowing your numbers. And I'll share some options for getting these tests at reasonable prices later, so stick around. Medications are commonly prescribed to lower LDL cholesterol. Here's a few examples. Statins. Simvastatin or lovastatin are some drugs that are effective in lowering LDL cholesterol and reducing heart attack risk in some individuals. However, they can cause side effects like muscle pain, digestive issues, and increased blood sugar levels. They may also lower your vitamin D and coenzyme Q10, which is a heart protective antioxidant. Another one is PCSK9 inhibitors. Repatha is one of the brand names of this class. This is a newer class of medication called monoclonal antibodies, referred to as MABs for short, which can dramatically lower LDL cholesterol, but they are expensive and typically reserved for high-risk individuals. And then we have things like Zetia. This lowers cholesterol absorption in the intestine and can be used in combination with statins, and sometimes you'll see this combined with another statin medication in the same pill. If you have high cholesterol and a personal history of cardiovascular disease, a genetic risk factor, or other conditions such as diabetes, a cholesterol-lowering medication may be necessary. But don't neglect your diet and lifestyle changes. Some people start a medication, but work on their diet and lifestyle in the meantime to see if they can come off medication. But diet and lifestyle changes take time to work. So if you need to start a medication, especially if your cholesterol or triglycerides are extremely high, don't hesitate. It may be just what your body needs. Work with your doctor to learn why your cholesterol is high. But what if you can't afford these expensive medications or just can't tolerate the side effects? There are some natural ways you can lower your cholesterol and triglycerides. And diet and lifestyle changes can be even more effective at reducing your risk of heart disease than medication alone because it addresses multiple factors, not just lowering cholesterol. Scientific research has consistently shown that certain dietary components can significantly impact heart health. Here are some foods or food components that can help along with some research articles to back these claims. First, we have soluble fiber. Found in oats, beans, lentils, fruits, and vegetables, soluble fiber helps lower LDL cholesterol. A meta-analysis in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that soluble fiber significantly reduces LDL cholesterol levels. 
and omega-3 fatty acids found in fatty fish like salmon and things like flax seeds and walnuts. Omega-3s help reduce triglycerides and inflammation. A study in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology demonstrated that omega-3 supplementation lowers triglycerides and reduces cardiovascular risk. And then we have plant sterols and stanols. These are found in fortified foods and naturally in fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. These compounds block cholesterol absorption in the gut. Research published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition shows that plant sterols or stanols reduce LDL cholesterol by up to 10%. And then, of course, we can't forget antioxidants. These are found in berries, dark chocolate, and leafy greens. They protect against oxidative stress and inflammation. And there's lots of things that cause inflammation and oxidative stress these days, so we need all the protection we can get. Well, some people ask, well, can supplements help reduce heart disease risk? Well, there are a few supplements that have been studied and shown to decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease. One is fish oil. This is rich in those omega-3 fatty acids. Fish oil supplements can lower triglycerides. And then coenzyme Q10, or commonly referred to as CoQ10. This supports heart health and is often recommended for those on statin medications because statins deplete this important heart antioxidant. And garlic extract has been shown to have a modest effect on lowering blood pressure and cholesterol levels. And we can't forget about vitamins and minerals for vascular health. So these small but essential nutrients play a crucial role in maintaining vascular health. Vitamin D supports cardiovascular health and a deficiency is linked to increased heart disease risk. Magnesium helps regulate blood pressure and muscle function. Vitamin K2 prevents arterial calcification and also supports bone health. Potassium is an important mineral for blood pressure support and for normal heart rhythm. B vitamins, particularly B6, B12, and folic acid, can help reduce homocysteine levels, a known risk factor for heart disease. And vitamin C and E are important antioxidants that protect us and our blood vessels against oxidative damage. Working with a registered dietitian can help you determine whether you are getting enough of these nutrients from your diet or if you need to supplement. For good quality supplements, check out my full script page and get a 20% discount. I'll put the link in the description. You can also find the link on my website under resources at claytonutrition.com. With all this talk about food and nutrients for heart health, I wanted to give you a heart healthy recipe. Here's my recipe for salmon salad. You'll need two cups of mixed greens, a half a cup of cooked quinoa, one avocado sliced, a quarter cup of walnuts chopped, four ounces of grilled salmon, a quarter cup of pomegranate seeds, and for your dressing, you'll mix two tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, salt and pepper to taste, and then combine the mixed greens and quinoa in a large bowl, add the avocado, walnut, salmon, and pomegranate seeds, whisk together the dressing ingredients and drizzle over the salad, toss gently, and serve. And there you have a heart-healthy meal. So you may ask, well, what else can I eat to get all those nutrients in? Well, here's a sample meal plan that incorporates those heart-healthy nutrients that we discussed. For breakfast, we could have oatmeal topped with fresh berries and a sprinkle of chia seeds with a glass of fortified orange juice that contains vitamin C and D. Unless, of course, you have diabetes and then you may just want to have the full orange instead of the juice. For lunch, do that heart-healthy salmon salad. For snack, a handful of almonds and an apple. For dinner, maybe it's grilled chicken with a side of steamed broccoli and brown rice and a small mixed green salad with olive oil and balsamic vinegar. And for dessert, maybe it's a small piece of dark chocolate, 70% cocoa or higher preferably. And that will provide a lot of magnesium and extra antioxidants. Now, if you're concerned about your heart health and want to know your numbers, ask your doctor first. Basic cholesterol labs are typically covered by your medical insurance. If you have other risk factors, your doctor may order more advanced tests to get a better picture of your true risk. If you don't have insurance or access to specialty labs, there are several companies that you can order labs from directly, but you will need to have blood drawn. The company I use is Rupa Health. 
They offer a wide variety of lab tests and are reasonably priced. If you visit my lab shop on Rupa Health, you'll find the labs I mentioned in the podcast today under the Heart Health Bundle. You can choose one, some, or all. This is cash pay only and LabCorp charges a small blood draw fee. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. And Clink Nutrition does not get any financial compensation for recommending these labs. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Our Daily Chews. Remember, while cholesterol is a piece of the puzzle, it's not the whole picture. By understanding the different types of cholesterol, exploring specialty labs, and making heart-healthy diet and lifestyle choices, you can significantly reduce your risk of heart disease. Don't forget to subscribe, share this episode with your friends, and leave a comment if you found it helpful. Until next time, keep chewing on good health. This podcast is sponsored by Clayton Nutrition, a private medical nutrition therapy practice offering telehealth services for those needing nutrition therapy to prevent, treat, or manage chronic health issues. Whether it's diabetes, cardiovascular concerns, food allergies, digestive issues, or weight management, we focus on good nutrition for better health. Check out my resources, blog articles, and one-to-one nutrition services at ClaytonNutrition.com. This podcast is for educational purposes only and is not intended to replace the advice of your healthcare professional. I recommend you seek help from a trained professional who can work with you in your specific situation.